Um, okay, I'm just going to share a couple more things. By the way, I've been joined by Billy, who's my cameraman tonight. So this is this is kind of a live show. Um, so normally, the, the reason I might look a bit fuzzy fuzzier than normal now is I'm using a tiny little camera on my computer to talk to you. Um, the, the one I normally talk to you through is the one that's now behind me. So you'll get a different perspective in my office in a second. Okay, so we're looking at the Cubs pioneering activity badge tonight. Um, and let's start off by looking at what does the badge say? So here are all the things you need to do to get your Cubs pioneering badge. Um, this is a notoriously difficult badge that people really struggle with teaching. And, um, and I reckon, um, I reckon that if you just give me another hour of your time, we can get through all of this and I can give you all the skills you need to get this badge. Um, so you need to make your own rope, perhaps using a rope machine or working with a friend. Well, if anyone's got a rope machine at home, that's, that's great. Um, but most people don't even have a friend at the moment. So um, I've come up with a way that you can make your own rope at home. And uh, we'll see how this goes for us. Um, you also need to tie three different knots, such as a reef knot, figure of eight, sheet bend, or bowline. Um, I'm just going to pick the first three of those, reef knot, figure of eight, and sheet bend. Um, so we'll do those live. And uh, if you need to a bit of revision on those. Again, there's a video on YouTube, uh, on our YouTube site, um, which uh, you can you can see me doing them in my office. Um, you, also need, you also need to make one hitch. Ollie, can you just mute whoever's uh, still unmuted? Um, you need to make one hitch, such as a clove hitch, round turn and two half hitches, or a cow hitch. Now, a cow hitch is pretty useless. Um, and the one of those you really need to know is a clove hitch. So we're gonna cover that. Uh, you need to tie a simple lashing. Uh, and take part in a knot game. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to do a knot game. Um, I'm going to trust you to come up with your own knot game at home. Um, it can be guess the knot, tie the fastest knot. Um, I don't know, pick pick one. But that's one part that we're not actually going to do tonight. And then we're going to look at uh, building an indoor pioneering project using simple knots and lashes. So what is the point of all of this? Well, pioneering is, is also known as scout engineering, and it's how you build big stuff. So if you want a massive watchtower um, to, to look over the horizon, that's that thing on the right. Um, if you want to pitch a tent up in the air um, so your whole patrol can sleep off the ground, that's the thing in the middle at the top. If you want a, a bridge to cross a river, that's the thing in the middle at the bottom. Um, or if you want a half flagpole, half climbing frame, that's the thing on the left. So this, this is essentially about um, tying bits of wood together with bits of rope to create useful stuff. Uh, and, and this isn't just stuff you play with. Um, this is useful. I, I've used it to lash together shelters on, on survival exercises uh, in, in Wales and in Scotland. I've used it to lash together canoes in Canada to make a big raft so that we could cross a big lake. Um, one of our explorer units uh, has, a, um, has an agreement with uh, a an organization called Surrey Search and Rescue. And they, um, they come and talk to the Explorer unit every now and again. And they talk about how they use these sorts of skills uh, in parts of the world where there's just been an earthquake or a tornado um, or a volcanic eruption or some, some other sort of natural disaster. And they construct big structures um, to help move debris out of the way and help pull people out of holes and, and, and all sorts of rescue stuff. So, to give us um, all the stuff we need for this, um, I'm going to play my own little game for another few minutes, and it's a bit of a scavenger hunt. So I need you to get these things. I need you to get two meters of toilet paper. Yes, that's right, two meters of toilet paper. So this stuff, right, how long is two meters? It's the height of a door, yeah? So if you hang it from the door, or you fold it in a half, it goes halfway up the door, you need two meters of toilet paper. Um, you also need a meter of string, cord, shoelaces, twine, or wool, some, something to tie a knot in. So sort of stuff I've got on my desk, um, I've got shoelaces. If you've got shoes with shoelaces on, take those off. If you've got a ball of string at home, find that. Um, if, you've, uh, if you've got some, some wool, anything like that, just find it. Right, you also need two sticks to lash together and a pen and paper. So I'm just gonna stop sharing so I can talk to you so you can see me. Here's my spotlight video. Right, so um, these two sticks to, to lash together. Yeah, I can, see, I can see you've got the toilet paper hand cord. Well done. 
these two sticks to last together, you're thinking of something quite small. So, for example, here's two wooden spoons that I've mixed out of the kitchen. That sort of stuff. That's what you're looking for. Um, or, got a Diablo set at home? I have. It's got two sticks with it. Get those. Other stuff. What have I got? Um, we had a cub. No, we had a, we had a beaver on the other day. I had a pair of nunchucker at home. I've got a pair of nunchucker. It's got two sticks attached. Yeah, it's that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I can see you've got the two sticks, Henko. You've got the uh, you've got the toilet paper. Yeah, you've got the string. Um, you also need a pen and paper. You, you're going to need that in a minute. So I'm just going to look and uh, look in gallery view and see see how we're all doing with collecting bits of stuff. Um, if you if you need other help, other people to help you find the stuff at home, um, get your family to sort it out. So remember, about two meters of toilet paper, about a meter of any string, which is cord, shoelaces. Look, look this um, this hoodie has got a cord on it. I could take that out. It's about a meter of string. Uh, anything, shoelaces, twine, wool, whatever. One moment. Siri's getting involved now. <laughs> I'm not sure how soon. Yeah. Um, all the cubs that went on the historic dockyard trip will have done rope making. Very good. Thanks for that. I'm going to do it again. So, yeah, I know you are, but. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to do it again. So, Thank you. <laughs> any two sticks lashed together? Think, think of those. Um, think of those wooden spoons from the kitchen. Um, oh, I'll tell you what I've got. I've got a baseball bat and a hammer. How about that? I could lash those together. Drumsticks. Yeah, juggling clubs. I can lash two of those together. My, my favourite there, I can see Freddie's got two wickets from, from a cricket set. Excellent. Yep. I can hear mayhem, mayhem going on behind me in the house. I haven't, I haven't prepared my own kids for this. <laughs> I'm just going to give you another few seconds to make sure you've got everything you need. So, two metres of toilet paper, about a metre of string, cord, shoelaces, twine or wool, two sticks to lash together, pen and paper. I can see this all going on. It's brilliant. Right. While we're doing that, I'm going to finally switch cameras to the one behind me. How about that? Okay. So this is this possibly interesting insight to um, to what you. So there's just kids stealing toilet paper behind me. That's fine. Um, possibly interesting insight to the sort of thing that I normally see when, I, when I'm um, <laughs> running these sorts of broadcasts. Uh, you don't normally see this view, so I've got kind of big screen studio mics, all that sort of stuff. The camera that you're, you're seeing me through normally sits uh, just over here in this space, so it's in the corner of my monitor, so I can stare into it and, and give you the sort of full, full high definition stare. Um, I'm going to assume we're all back now, so I'm going to start off um, you're going to need your two meters of toilet paper. So I'm just going to take off about two meters of toilet paper. Here we are. A um, couple leaders in the house. Uh, normally, if you're on telly, um, you have a director in the gallery saying, we can't hear you. Um, I, I don't have a director. So if I stray too far from this microphone, um, you're going to have to shout, we can't hear you. Um, and, uh, and I'll turn on a different microphone and it'll be fine. Uh, so, here I've got my two meters of toilet paper like this, and I'm just going to fold it in half like this. So you need you need to fold it in half, and you need the middle point of your two meters of toilet paper. Now, if you look really carefully, look really carefully, the middle point of my two meters of toilet paper, it's got one of those um, it's got one of those creases, one of those serrations down it. So I'm not going to use that bit. I'm just going to move one sheet or one half sheet along. So I'm using the middle of one sheet of toilet paper, like that. So, hold it up like this. I'm going, looking over my shoulder now. What I'm going to do, with my right hand, I'm going to twist towards me, like the throttle on a motorbike. With my left hand, I'm going to twist away from me. Ollie, we're getting a bit of background noise. Can you mute something or other? Thank you, mate. That's better. Right, so with my right hand, twist towards me. With my left hand, twist away from me. And I'm just going to twist this until it comes together in a bunch like that. 
okay? So what I'm gonna do is turn it over so that the bit that's on the right is at the top. The bit that I've twisted towards me on the right is at the top and the bit that's on the left is at the bottom. I'm gonna show you that again. So I've got this, I'm gonna twist it together. So left hand pushing away, right hand pulling towards. Let's get the right over the shoulder until it twists in half. And I've got the right hand over the top. I'll bring it down here now, Billy. I've got the right over the top and the left underneath. And I'm gonna put my left thumb exactly where the two of them cross. So this bit that's down the bottom here is the left bit that I haven't twisted yet. So I'm just gonna twist it towards me, throw it over the top of the other one, like this, and start working with the right one. And then I'm gonna repeat this. So I'm gonna twist it towards me, throw it over the top, and move my thumb along. Twist it towards me, throw it over the top, and move along. Twist, turn, throw. So if you've got a massive mess of toilet paper now, that's fine. <laughs> because the idea here is understanding that rope making is about twisting strands of rope in one direction, but twisting the whole rope in the other direction. So this is just what we're modeling here, making a two strand bit of rope. Twist towards, throw over, pull through. Twist towards, throw over, pull through. And you know what, I'm just going to accelerate so you can sort of see the sort of effect I'm looking for. Now the bad news is, um, the once we finish with this, you're not going to be able to use this toilet paper for wiping your bottom anymore. Um, this toilet paper is going to be fairly flipping useless, except as a bit of rope. And even then, it's not going to be a particularly useful bit of rope because it's not that strong. I can see a few people as they're making it, their, um, their rope sort of breaking in their hands. So either yep. try and grab another bit of toilet roll if you've got enough left, <laughs> or make a smaller rope with what you've got left. You just need to be a bit careful as you're twisting it all because if you do it too strong, too yeah, tight, you, you'll snap it. That's exactly right, Simon. If, you, if you're a bit rough with it, um, then your, your rope's going to break. <coughs> so just so, twist uh, and throw. Yeah, as Malcolm's carrying on, we, um, uh, we, we did this ooh, last year, I think now, um, at, at First Fetchum, and we, we got Cubs to build rope exactly as we're doing now, exactly like this, and then we tried to pick up some buckets of water and things like that. And what we found was once you've done and made your rope like you're doing, what we had to do was sort of get three of them together and sort of almost plait them like you would, like you would plait long hair. Obviously I can't, don't plait long hair because I don't have any, but if you plait them together, you obviously then create it a bit stronger and that seemed to work really well. Okie dokie. Um. I can hear mayhem going on in the other room where my own children are messing around with toilet paper. Now the good news is um, that for your pioneering badge, um, I'm not gonna ask to see your toilet paper. <laughs> so the idea of this is that you have a go at making rope, um, not that you become an expert in making rope. Um, Please also don't use all the toilet paper in your house. Practicing this, uh, you, you don't, you really don't need to. But if you if you get the hang of this and you can twist yourself together, something that looks a bit like a bit like this, like that, so swipe it past, then you have produced something that's quite a decent two-strand bit of rope. Um, and the way you finish it off is just by putting a little knot in the end to hold it all together. And then it becomes self-standing. And that, honestly, is exactly how rope is made. Um, apart from it not being made of toilet paper. Um, and it's actually machines that twist it into that shape. So this is task one, is we have now learned how to make rope. Um, 
not very useful rope, but uh, if you, uh, as Simon says, plait it together, um, then you, you may find that uh, you, can, you can lift a bucket of water with it. Okay. Let's uh, let's just have a little look in the gallery view and see um, let's see see if anyone's managed to hold up a bit of um, a bit of bog paper rope for me. That looks good, Lewis. I like that. Henko, you're in the middle of that. Lovely Felicity, lovely Oliver. That's brilliant. Um, <laughs> yep, Lucas, Freddie, Isaac. I think I think I'm going to declare success. That uh, even. Uh, <laughs> Even if some of you've gone a bit wrong and you've got you've got some bits of uh, bits of toilet paper lying around on the floor, um, I can see quite a lot of people have actually got the idea. And now, of course, I've got some um, I've got some real rope on the desk, and and it's it's exactly the same sort of thing. You can see it's just several strands of stuff twisted together. Um, that uh, if you if you were to cut the end and you didn't seal the end like I like I've done here, um, then it will just come apart and fray. Um, and this is this is a bit of plastic rope. Uh, you also get rope made out of other stuff. So this is uh, this rope's made from sizal, um, and it's quite a traditional material for making for making rope from. Okay, let's let's be moving on. I like what you're doing with the spoons, Oliver. Very nice. Um, I'm just going to put myself back on speaker view. Next thing we have to do is tie three different knots, such as the reef knot, the figure of eight, sheet bend, or bowline. So I've got some um, pretty big bits of rope that I'm going to show you how to do this, because I've, I've also got pretty big bits of hand. And, uh, and if I try and show you tying knots on tiny bits of string with massive hands, it tends to go wrong. So over, over my wrist, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do exactly what it says on the tin. We're going to start off with the reef knot. Um, now, the reef knot, the, the textbooks say this is for attaching two bits of rope together. Rubbish, rubbish. It's useless for that. Um, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you attach two bits of rope together like this and hang off it, you'll, you'll likely fall to your death. So don't do that. What this actually is useful for is any knot that has to lie flat. So like the one in your shoelaces, um, or if you're tying a bandage on and you want to finish it off, or for some pioneering knots that have to have to remain flat. Um, nevertheless, it is a knot that's on our World Scout badge. Uh, if you look at the purple thing in the bottom of your uniform, uh, and this is how it's done. So I'm using two different color ropes. So the traditional way of teaching this, right over left and under. So I'm going to put the right bit of rope over the left bit of rope, and then pull it underneath like that. Okay, then left over right and through the middle. And what you're left with is a knot that looks like that. And when you hold it together, it goes ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk. Okay, so I'm going to show you that one more time. I see some of you, yep, although mostly leaders are already holding it up. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you this. Um, notice I'm holding the right, the blue bit of rope. It goes over the purple bit of rope and underneath. Now I'm holding in the left, the blue bit of rope. It goes over the purple bit of rope and underneath. One reef knot. Okay, I see a bunch of you, you've got your hands up. Ollie, do you wanna, do you wanna unmute a few people, take questions if they're, if they're trying to talk to me? Ollie, are you paying attention anymore? Hey, Ollie's not paying attention. Maybe he's gone to get a snack. Hello. Um, yeah. Felicity's got a hand up. There you go. Felicity, what do you want? Oh no, that was before. Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot uh, to put it down. I was I was away looking for rope. Tyler's what? next. Right. Tyler, were you, you were, did you want to ask something? Oh no, we're fine. I didn't, okay. I didn't mean to have put my hand up. Okay. Just Rue then, is it? Hello, Rue. Make it. You managed to make it. That's that's good news, my friend. Okay, we have got um, two more knots to do. So, the figure of eight. Next on the list, it says figure of eight. So, the figure of eight knot is something you use as it's what we call a stopper knot. So, it makes a lump on the end of your rope. Um, it's also used in climbing, 
but it doesn't see that it doesn't say on the spec the rethreaded figure of eight so we're just going to tie you a figure of eight so you know the simplest knot in the world you know the simplest knot in the world where you put it over and you put it through the middle and you pull it tight and it looks like that that's called a thumb knot the figure of eight is not so different from a thumb knot except you put it over and then i'm going to pass this back under the rope and then through there and it looks a bit like an eight so if you want to play along i'm going to do that one more time so it's a double one with a loop on the end like, thanks for listy you're welcome so, so pass one bit of rope over the other put it under the main bit of rope put it through the middle and there you have your figure of eight easy no easy i'm going to show you one more time okay so we go over under through the front figure of eight bosh i'm just going to uh flick in gallery view yeah there's lots of people holding figure of eights up dangling the figure of eights i'm just I'm just challenging Billy by moving around faster than you can move the camera. Okay, you've got to know one more knot. One more knot. You've got to know one more knot. And again, I'm looking at the spec. It says sheet bend, sheet bend. Okay, this is a genuinely useful knot, the sheet bend. This is the knot you use to attach two bits of rope together. So I'm going to use my two, the two bits of rope I had before. Flicking myself back onto speaker view so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've made a loop with one bit of rope and I'm gonna hold it in my left hand like that. With the second bit of rope, I'm gonna come up through the hole it's a sort of rabbit coming out of the hole behind the tree type scenario. So we come up, we go round the back like this. Now, the real temptation would be to stick it back down that hole there that it's just come up out of. That would be a bad move because that would create the, um, the ugly cousin of a reef knot called a thief knot, and, and that is even more useless. So I don't want to do that. Where I want to put it is in the space between that bit of rope and that bit of rope. And it goes through there like that. And when all this settles down, you get a knot that looks like that. Okay, the, this, is, this is possibly the most, diffi most difficult of the three. So I'm gonna show you a couple more times. And incidentally, um, if you need some help, you can watch the video on YouTube or you can buy yourself a knot book like this one. Uh, this is one I got for three pounds 59 from a from, from a charity shop and it's uh, much better than all the notebooks that i paid a lot more money for so sheet bend one more time i've made a loop in the rope like that which i hold in my left hand with my right hand i come up through the middle i go round the back and then i insert it in that space there between the two ropes and i pull it tight I'm going to show you one more time and actually I'm just going to flick to gallery view so I can see so I can see who's playing along. So there it is. I've made my loop. I'm coming up. I'm going around the back and I'm slotting through the middle. And I've got my finished sheet bend. Now for this badge we need to see that you can do oh, those no. three knots or in fact any three knots so if you want to show me some evidence for this badge what would be really cool if you did would be to take a sheet of paper like this and quarter it and then oh. using a little bit of string you could tie a knot and place it on that on that bit on that quarter so you could type right reef knot at the top there figure eight and sheet bend 
And if, you, if you're feeling really clever, you could put any other knot on the, on the full square. Um, and that would be the start of what we call a knot board. You could keep that forever. You could put it on your wall, demonstrate your ability to do knots. Um, if you're feeling smart, then you can tie these knots out of spaghetti and then attach them to the paper with, uh, with sellotape. Uh, and then you have a knot board to keep forever. So this is one of the things that you need to do if you want to submit evidence for this badge. Tie those three knots, place them on a sheet of paper, photograph it, and send it in. Right. I could just, sorry, Mark, if I could just quickly jump in. One of the other things you'll all have to do for one of your challenge badges is teach a cub a new skill as well. So you guys that have learned these knots, if you practice them and do, do like Malcolm's just said about sort of submitting the evidence, when we're all back in the huts and stuff and actually face to face, you can tell your Arcalis you've learned them, although most of your Arcalis are probably watching this now. And then you can maybe teach some other cubs how to do those knots. So it's two, two badges or two parts of badges for one. Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, you can be my co-presenter next time. It gave me just enough time to rearrange all the stuff on my desk. Yeah. It's almost like we didn't practice it. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, it's brilliant. We're, we're like brain twins. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you need to do those three knots. You also need to do one hitch. So remember, we talked about a hitch. Right, so the, the hitch we're going to look at is called the clove hitch. Why the clove hitch? Because it's the one you use all the time. It's the really important one. So, um, need a few of my view of my desk down here. So the reason I put this cloth down here uh, is not to protect my desk from from my uh, from my stick. It's because the, my stick's the same colour as my desk, and tying this um, tying this directly against the desk, it wouldn't it wouldn't show you very much. So there are two ways to tie the clove hitch, and I'm going to show you both because the because one is beautiful and one is functional. So the beautiful way to tie a clove hitch is by making two loops. So like this, I'm going to hold my string and I'm going to, using my right hand over my left hand, make a loop like that. And then just a little bit further down the string, I'm going to make exactly the same loop. Now this is the key point. You put the second loop behind the first loop and then you pop it over the end of a bit of stick like this. And there you have a clove hitch. And if Billy zooms right in, you can see the characteristic of a clove hitch is that it looks like a, a motorway bridge. You get these two bits of string that are flat like this, and then one that goes straight over the top. So two bits of string that are flat and one that goes over the top. So that is an obvious clove hitch. So I'm going to just show you that again with the two loops. So one loop second loop now this is the bit where people people fall over so you need to put the second loop the one you've just made slide it behind the first loop pop the whole thing over the end of a bit of stick pull it tight right that's a lovely trick to know but there is a second way of tying this that you're probably going to use all the time so it is this this is always used with the end of a bit of string and a bit of stick. So I'm going to take my string, take my stick, and I'm going to lie it over like that. Turn it around. I'm going to put it over again, and it's going to create a cross. It's going to come around a third time, and I'm going to feed the end directly under the middle of that cross. I'm just trying to do this without putting my hands in the way. And it looks like that. So I'm going to show you that again. Let's try for an over the shoulder shot. So it goes over the string in one direction, sorry, over the stick in one direction, over the stick in the other direction to make that cross. The third time I want to feed it right under the middle of that cross. So I relax it a little bit, feed it all the way through the middle and pull it tight. That's your, that's your second classic way of tying the clove hitch. So I'm just going to, again, flick on gallery view. 
I'm looking for people with clove hitches on bits of stick like this. Show me your clove hitch on a stick. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Looking good, Rue. Looking good, Freddie. Nice work, Finn. Yep. I'm enjoying your work. It's all looking good. So we're doing well. We have done how you make rope from bog paper. We have done the three knots, um, the reef knot, the figure of eight, and the sheet bend. We've also done one hitch, the clove hitch. To complete all the theory you need for this badge, we now need to tie a simple lashing. And there is one lashing which you're going to need 95% of the time. 95% of the time you're doing this lashing and only 5% of the time you're doing any other sort of lashing. And the sort of lashing you need 95% of the time is called the square lashing. It doesn't matter what you're building. If you're building uh, one of those towers we saw earlier, um, all around the bottoms of those towers, around the sides, square lashing, square lashing, square lashing, with a couple of diagonal lashings in the middle. If you're building an A-frame, you do one lashing at the top, and then it's square lashings all the way down the sides. So, and there's so much stuff you can build just using a square lashing. So this is how it works. So firstly, you're going to need your stick with a clove hitch around it. This is where it starts. You're going to need your second stick like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is feed my rope from here under that second stick. I'm kind of sitting on it, so I'm just moving it out of the way. There we go. Right. So it's gone under that stick, and then going to feed it over that one, like that. And they're going to feed it under that one, like this. And by doing that, we've done one turn all the way around on the square lashing. My bog paper rope's getting in the way now. I'm going to pull that through. So you see how that holds together? I've gone under that one, over that one, under that one, and I'm back to here. Right. The second time this goes round, I say again, if you don't get this immediately, um, watch the YouTube video, it's all there. So I'm just going to go over that one again, under that one, and over that one, and then I'm going to go around a third time. So, over, under, over. So by the time you've gone around three times, for most jobs, that's enough. So it looks like more than three here. That's because I started off with the clove hitch. But there it's gone around three times, there it's gone around three times, there it's gone around three times. Every lashing has kind of two parts. There's the lashing part, and then there's the frapping part. Now, I don't know why we call it frapping. Um, that means hitting people in French. I don't know. Maybe it's something to do with that. But the frapping part on the square lashing goes around the middle. So as I've just turned it over that stick, I'm going to go around the middle like this. And like this. Get to there. And I reckon another three-ish turns around that before I'm going to finish off by tying a clove hitch. So the square lashing starts with the clove hitch, it ends with the clove hitch, and the middle bit is all that sort of over, under, over, under, over, under, and then the round the middle. That's all you need. So necessarily, the one I'm going to tie at the end, you can't do by doing the two loops and over the end. It just doesn't work that way. So the one I'm going to tie at the end is definitely going to be the make a cross and feed it underneath. So I'm going to make my cross right here. Goes over once, goes over twice. Oh, I've got a really ugly knot in the middle there. I'm just That's going to mess me up. So it's gone over twice. There's my cross. As it comes around a third time, I'm going to feed the string straight under the middle of that.
And because I'm pulling it in that direction, when I pull it like that, it tightens up the whole lashing and it stays still. So that is a square lashing. I'm going to see, I'm going to just going to flick to gallery view and see if anyone's got any success. Ah, oh, yeah. Nice one, Fred. Uh, we've got a hand up from Rue. Uh, Rue, question. Hello, Hello Rue. I can't do it. You, you, <laughs> you it's a lash up. You can't do it. Where, where are you, mate? I can't see you. Speak up, Rue. Yeah. Here. <laughs> oh, well, I can see you now. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Um, if you've got access to YouTube, yeah, yep, you've got to find find the video. It looks very much like this live show. You get uh, at the end of my desk. This is what we call my mansplaining desk. Um, the the third lashing I do on the video called um, lashings for pioneering is the square lashing. So you can watch that after this, and and just take it really slowly. Pause the video if you need it. And, and it's all good. But you, you will get this, it, it will be easy. Um, so reason I'm not redoing it now is it will just take another five minutes and loads of other people have already got it. So what you can do is go and look at the YouTube video um, and it will all be good, right? Cheers, Cheers mate. Right, I see, I see lots of other people have, have nailed this. So we have a square lashing. So I'm going to stick all this out of the way. and move down my desk a bit. Um, so you need to build an indoor pioneering project. The camera's just moving towards me. You need to build an indoor pioneering project. And um, there we are. I can, I can see myself on the big screen now. Now, you, if, you, if, you, if you're down the scout hut, we can build like... Uh, trebuchets and ballistas and, and all sorts of useful stuff. But in your house, um, you might not have access to uh, all the sort of pioneering poles and, and stuff that you have down the scout hut. You might only have pencils or you might have some garden canes that you can saw up or some pens. Um, please don't saw up the wooden spoons you've nicked from the kitchen. Um, otherwise your parents are gonna come looking for you and it's, it's, not, gonna be a, it's not gonna be a pretty sight. Um, but I, I've, got a, I've got a couple of scenarios that you can build, a sort of scale model um, of the sort of indoor pioneering project that we can make. So the first one is, I've got these two chaps um, who are stranded on a desert island. These two chaps are stranded on a desert island and what they need to make is a raft. Yes, I said raft, not raft. So, Entirely with square lashings, you might make this sort of thing. I'm just moving this into shot. Okay, sorry, hand solo. So, entirely out of square lashings, you make this sort of thing. So, you need one, two, three, four, five, six bits of stick. Uh, it looks a bit like a hashtag. So, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight square lashings. That's all I've done. Right, so that's the kind of structure, the frame of the raft. What you also need is something to act as the, the flotation, the barrels. Um, so I've taken one for the team. Um, and I've had a couple of glasses of uh, cool, refreshing tonic water. <laughs> over the weekend um, to get these two cans. Now I know these have got a hole in the end, so you'd need to seal it up if you were going to play with this in the bath or whatever. So, you know, gaffer tape if you need to do that. But if you place these underneath like that, then you have got the structure of the raft that's going to get these guys off the desert island. Um, now, you're going to need to lash these onto that raft somehow. So without learning a load more... A load more um, lashings and stuff. I just recommend that you're going to um, put a clove hitch right in the middle of this. It's a little bit fiddly with this tiny string. Uh, 
and I'm just going to wrap this around, lash this around a few times. And then secure it with another clove hitch. Like that. And if I did the same, see it's now it's now stuck to the bottom. If I did the same the other side, then my two chaps could be uh, sitting on the raft, making their way off the desert island. Um, points if you manage to fashion paddles out of lolly sticks or, or something like that, or, or just find find some little spoons to place in their hands. So if you want to show me that you can do an indoor pioneering project, um, then this is kind of the thing that you can be making. If you've got a couple of action figures, um, find a couple of cans, find a few bits of stick, lash together a raft, sit your figures on it, take a photograph, send it in, job done. Pioneering project made of uh, simple knots and lashings. I've got a second idea for a pioneering project. I want you to imagine we've got, uh, we've got two patrols or, or sixes. Ugh. So the, here's, uh, here's one of our patrols. Let's hope they all stand up. Eh. This one's got long nails or something. And here's our second patrol. There we go. Let's just stand him in there. So we've got, we got, we got our two patrols or sixes. Um, and what these guys really need is some sort of flagpole because, um, you know, clearly they're, they're not squaring off for a fight. They're, they're just falling in um, for, a, for an evening of, of Cub Scouting. They've made a nice little horseshoe. So here's, here's a second idea for you. Um, if you have something that looks a bit, a bit like this, I'm gonna, just going to move these guys out of the way for a second. Um, otherwise, it'll just be mayhem as I just keep knocking them over. So if you've got something that looks a bit like this, then I've just put four square lashings there. So one, two, three, four. What I've also got is a longer bit of stick and a shorter bit of stick, and I've square lashed the two of those together. So what I'm gonna do is just square lash there and there so that this makes a kind of hinge and stands up like that. So let me, let me just do that now. This, this might take me a couple of minutes. Um, so I don't know, Ollie, if you want to check and see if anyone's got any questions or stories while I just lash this together. Well, there doesn't seem to be any hands up right now, but if anyone has got a question, put your hand up and we will be able to ask them. Have I stunned you all into silence? This would be a very boring evening if I just, if you just sat there watching me tie square lashing after square lashing. With tiny, tiny bits of uh, string. And let me finish this off. So the, um, the the raft idea you you showed before, Malcolm. We yep. um, we did that again once we when we did the uh, the rope making and so on. We we grabbed or got all the cubs to collect sticks out the garden or when they've been on a walk and whatever, and they made a raft similar to, to the one you, you showed us, but with sticks sort of all lashed together um, rather than there being holes in the middle, in, in between ah, them. Right. Um, and so we didn't have the, uh, the sort of flotation device underneath, for just a load of sticks. Um, we, we did do a, a flagpole on the top. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, oh, my battery's going, I'm gonna die in a minute. Um, and we then took them down the, the River Mole and we actually raced them against each other on the river, which was quite good fun. Uh, so we've now got a hand up from Tyler. Uh, Tyler, you got a question for us? Well, it, was, it was me actually, more. It I wasn't a question. It was, uh, I, pointed, I was going to say that my dad, when um, I was probably the same age as many of these cubs, and I was playing with Star Wars uh, figures and Ewoks, 
he made me a little blister catapult um, out of uh, apple uh, prunings, which um, probably lasted uh, about a week, but it was good fun whilst it lasted. So uh, as we're all in lockdown and uh, we've got all this uh, oh, a bit of time, then uh, you, for the adventurous, then uh, try and make yourself a mini little blister uh, catapult. Yeah, very good, very clever idea. Just don't fire it at your sister or your brother. No, 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 that would be Definitely. bad. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Thank <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay, so I, I've got my um I've got my flag. Can you can you zoom out a bit, Bills? Although otherwise it's yeah, there we go. So so I, I've now got my, my flagpole stood up. Um, but it, it's still a bit kind of wobbly in that direction. It's it's fine in the other direction. So if I was gonna finish this off. I guess what I'd probably do uh, is stick a, a clove hitch right in the middle of that um, and then maybe lash it this way and the other way. And just because I'm awkward, I'm going to do a round turn and two half hitches this time, uh, which is a knot I haven't showed you, but hey, it's on the video. so. Um, There we are. So, again, if you want to create that uh, that scene um, of our Cub Scouts uh, falling in, I then got my um, what can we call them? The the goody side, um, and possibly more the kind of baddie side, the baddie baddie six or baddie patrol, uh, or Siths and Jedi's that sort of thing. Um, and and you, you've got a you've got a simple flagpole there. So this this again is is a second idea. Um, again, if you wanted to lash something like this together for me, um, create a, create a little sort of battle scene or or a, a little uh, gents falling in round the flag scene for me. Take a photograph of it, send it in. Um, that would be absolutely brilliant demonstration of of having achieved that badge. Um, so. I'm just going to move all this out of the way because we need to go back to this. Um, let's just say say thank you to Billy at that point. Well done, good camera work. Um, he's normally my director, by the way. He uh, he scripted one of our videos. No, you're ruining it now, Billy. You've got my bald spot there. We've all been there. Um, so I'm just going to switch cameras like this. Uh, and if we just turn that off, that's fine. Thank you, Billy. A little round of applause for Billy. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm just going to flick on to flick on to gallery view. Um, a hand up from Gideon. Hi, Gideon. Um, what's the email address for Leatherhead District Scouts? Yeah, so that's remote scouting at leatherheaddistrictscouts.org.uk, remote scouting at leatherheaddistrictscouts.org.uk. Uh, and I will tell you what, um, I'm, you know, you've, you've almost um, preempted the slide I'm going to write on that. So um, I'm going to sh reshare my screen. And whip over here. So we've done what the badge to tell you. What's, what's the point of pioneering? Uh, we've done the scavenger hunt. So, how to get the Pioneer badge? This is this is a reminder. So, tonight's practical training session. You have done that. You now have all the skills you need to get this badge. Um, it's kind of that easy. So, remember that knot board that I showed you. You get that bit of paper. You quarter it down. You tie a reef knot, a figure eight, a sheet bend, uh, and if you want to show off and tie four, just to completely uh, knock the badge requirements out of the park. Uh, you do that, so four of those, um, and then you, you put the knot on it. You can either just place it on and photograph it, or you can tape it down. Um, and if you want to show off and tie out a spaghetti, that's absolutely fine too. Um, so simple knot board and photograph it. You then make some sort of model. So the ones I've suggested, the raft, the flagpole, or whatever. I'm thinking of something that, that takes about 
I don't know, eight or eight or ten square lashings, which is going to mean about 16 to 20 clove hitches as well. Um, and just shows a little bit of little bit of skill in tying things together. Um, I'd also love to see if you can if you can make it like uh, uh, you know a creative scene where you've got it um, you, you know you've got your raft in a on a on a blue sheet in the middle of an ocean with a couple of guys you know maybe maybe if you combine the two projects and uh, and you lash something that looks a bit like the flagpole to the top of that raft you could put a sail on it um, you know your your uh, your creativity could be um, endless do something like that take a nice photograph of it and send the evidence to this address. So remote scouting at leatherheaddistrictscouts.org.uk. That's remote scouting at leatherheaddistrictscouts.org.uk. And however, wherever you're from, um, make sure you put your name on it. Tell us which uh, pack you belong to. And we will make sure that your Arcala gets that. Um, and all the evidence you've submitted and, um, and they give you appropriate credits uh, towards the badge or for the whole badge. If you submit everything there, you will have the whole badge. 